Today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between cast main caps versus billet main caps, what they are, what you would use them for, but most importantly, the cost, and at what point should you consider making the switch from cast to billet? So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First, let's go ahead and talk about what the main cap actually does. So we are actually looking at the main cap and it's currently upside down. Typically in V6, V8, as well as inline engines, the main caps are actually going to sit like this. They act like a cradle, which hold the crankshaft in place up against the engine block. To demonstrate, I have a 1969 Mopar 383 big block. It is currently upside down and this main cap actually belongs right here and fits like so. The main purpose of the main caps is to locate the crank in its place, but beyond that, the main caps are the only thing holding that crankshaft where it's at. There's nothing else retaining the crankshaft into the block aside from the main caps. This is true from engines designed in the 1950s all the way to modern engines now. The shape and the size of the main caps and the addition of a girdle may change things a little bit, but overall the general design is about the same. Usually you can judge the strength of a main cap by the amount of bolts that you can run through it. This is a big block Mopar and unfortunately you're only able to run two bolts down the middle of it. Lucky enough that the bolts are fairly large in size, but the only thing located those caps in place are those two bolts holding the cap down and you have these machine surfaces on the edges and we have to rely on those two keep that crankshaft where it's at. In a typical street application, this is more than sufficient. Depending on how much vibration there is in the motor, you might tend to see something called cap walk, and that is where the cap will actually vibrate in place and it will eventually move around until it leads to an eventual failure. How other manufacturers have been able to solve this problem is that they design blocks with two bolt mains like these, or in heavy duty applications, they've added a boss to add two more bolts on the side, and that's what you would call a four bolt main block. Instead of having the two bolts right here, you would have the two bolts here and then two smaller bolts on the side, clamping everything down and holding everything a little bit better together. Some high performance engines in the 60s and 70s actually introduced another pair of bolts ran through the side of the block and that's what we call cross bolted mains. So the blocks are actually machined to accept bolts coming in through the side of the skirt. Instead of relying on the main cap to hold everything down one way, those caps are designed to hold a bolt down this way and then another bolt holding it that way. Although that method made those engines a little bit more expensive to produce, they definitely saw results. And so subsequent variations of that style of main caps were adapted when the new Hemi, LS, Coyote came out. All those engines came factory installed with cross bolt and mains. And most factory engines out of the 60s and 70s, they all came with cast iron main caps, which oftentimes the same material that they used to cast the block was also used to cast the main caps. The main reason for that was because it was inexpensive compared to a different type of material. Nowadays, you can buy them in billet steel and billet aluminum, depending on what exactly you're trying to do with the engine. I have a set of billet main caps right here. These are actually made by the guys at PRW. And right off the bat, as soon as you pick them up, you'll notice that these are about 10 or 20% heavier than the stock main caps are. Not only that, they seem to be a lot beefier and the register that we spoke about earlier seems to be a lot taller on the billet main caps. The taller registers allow the caps to locate themselves a lot better inside of the engine block, leading to a little bit less cap walk. But really the main benefit is the fact that they're made out of billet steel instead of cast iron or cast steel. What that means is that these caps are actually precision machined out of one big chunk of steel. By switching to a billet steel, you can pick and choose the type of steel that you wanna use for the main cap. And then with a CNC machine, you can dial in those tolerances to a fraction of a 10th of an inch. Because you can pick and choose the grade of the steel that goes into making the billet caps, you can then make the caps significantly stronger than the original caps. Like I mentioned before, in a standard strip or street strip application, you don't necessarily need that extra added strength in the bottom end of the block. You're usually not revving out the engine far enough or you're not putting enough cylinder pressure inside of the combustion chamber to warrant the need to upgrade to billet caps. But once you decide to go over say 13 to one compression ratio and the caps are not known to be the highest quality, swapping out to billet main caps becomes cheap insurance to make sure the whole thing stays together. But that being said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows when trying to switch over to billet caps. Switching over from the stock cast caps to the billet caps requires a machine process called line boring and then a subsequent line hone. So the first line boring process takes the engine block as you have it assembled and it runs a boring bore all the way through this engine and it actually makes the bore of the crankshaft bigger. 
The reason for that is that the bore of the billet main cap is machined significantly smaller than their cast counterparts. The caps that belong to a specific engine belong to that engine. Wherever they are assembled from the factory, that's where they belong. You shouldn't try to mix and match the caps because you can run into issues by messing up the tolerances. The billet main caps are machined as if the engine was brand new, which means the inner bore is actually smaller than the bore of the already machined stock cap. So what's going to happen is that if you just install these straight up up against the block, now technically the bottom half of the moon is smaller than the top half of the moon. And so your bearings are not going to line up and you're gonna have immediate binding and issues installing the crankshaft. So in order to get that remedied, you have to not only install the main caps, but you have to install the main caps and then get the engine line board. After the engine gets line board, the machinist has to switch stones and move on to a process called the line hone. And that's where you would actually oversize the entire bore by a given number, be it 10 thousandths or 5 thousandths or whatever the next standard size is for that engine. So the first process gets it close and the second process dials it into the tolerance that you need. Because of that, a lot of machine shops will do a line hone but not all of them will do a line bore because they don't have the right equipment for it. You have to cut about a hundred thousandths, maybe even more depending on the type of cap that you're running. And so standard run of the mill machine shops will just not have the equipment for it. The second problem that you run into is the actual cost. I'm in Southern California and my cost to line bore the motor was $950. On top of that, you have the cost of the line hone, which is another 200 to $400 up on top, depending on what machine shop you go to. So we're looking at a minimum of $1,100 to a maximum of about $1,300 or $1,400 plus tax just to install the main caps. By comparison, the cost of the main caps is actually not that much. These main caps by PRW at the time of recording are about $280, $290. These are cheap compared to the process that it costs to actually get these caps installed onto the block. So you've just received your engine block back from the machine shop. It's been line board, it's been honed, it's ready to go, but there's still one step that we skipped that needs to be addressed before it goes to the machine shop. And that is the topic of upgrading the hardware going into the main caps. When you initially take the engine block to the machine shop, the engine block has to be sent in with the correct caps in the correct order and the hardware that's going to be installed has to be the final hardware that you're going to be using when the engine is fully assembled. The reason for that is when the head is torqued down or when the main caps are torqued down, the engine will actually distort a little bit. And so how much it gets distorted depends on how much torque you apply to the fasteners. Whatever hardware it goes to the machine shop, that's the hardware that you're gonna have to run. If you, for example, send in the block with stock hardware torqued to the stock spec, and then pick up the block back up from the machine shop and then replace that with studs, those studs are going to require a lot more torque than the stock bolts did. And so you're gonna introduce a little bit more deformity back into the block. Why that matters is that when everything's torqued down and the engine is lime bored, it's lime bored to the deformity that it has when everything is torqued down together. Once everything is nice and straight, you really don't want to introduce any kind of other deformities into the block because that pretty much ruins the entire point of why the engine was lime bored and then line honed in the first place. How that relates to the billet cap is that you really don't want to be using the stock hardware on the billet caps because now that the billet caps can take the abuse, the weak point then moves on to the bolts. And if the bolts cannot handle the abuse, the end results are going to be the same as if you never installed the main caps in the first place. To remedy the situation, I recommend upgrading not necessarily to bolts, but to studs instead. The reason for that is that you have to remember that the engine block is still cast iron. Whatever strength is built into the stock threads that's the strength that it's going to have regardless. When you install high-end aftermarket studs, the torque rating actually gets increased so you can apply more clamping force onto the main caps. For example, on this big block Mopar, the stock torque spec is 85 foot-pounds. And when you upgrade to studs, the torque spec actually updates to 110 foot-pounds. So you imagine that you're adding 30 foot-pounds per stud onto the crankshaft. More clamping force means less cap walk and less cap walk means less chance for failure. So although it is an added expense on top of the billet caps themselves, it is absolutely recommended that you upgrade to studs at the same time that you're upgrading the caps. Because if you don't, there's a good chance you can have a failure point. Not necessarily guaranteed that you would, 
but you could. So now that you know how much it costs and what it takes to get these caps installed on a block, who should actually be looking into installing billet main caps? And the answer to that is it really depends on what you're trying to do with the engine. If it's an engine that's going to see the track every once in a while, you're gonna drive it every day, but you're not necessarily pushing it to the limit, it's not really going to do you any good to upgrade to the billet caps. On the flip side, if you have an engine like mine, which is going to see not just one turbo, but two turbos and over a hundred horsepower worth of air running through the engine. Running the billet main caps is almost required, not because I'm afraid the stock caps will break, but because you've got so much money invested in the rest of the rotating assembly between boring the cylinders, buying new piston, rod, brand new crank, bearings, the assembly process, and all the machine work, it really doesn't make sense to try to risk it and not install the billet main caps. It just takes you pushing the engine just a little too far and the whole bottom end will come right out of the bottom of the motor and the entire motor becomes. So by comparison, yes, $1,500 is a lot of money, but the rest of the motor is also a lot of money. So you have to be honest with yourself and, and ask, am I really going to be pushing this motor as hard as I think I am? Is this really going to be worth it in the end? Do I really have enough invested in the rest of the block to add another $1,000, $1,500 on top of that to protect it. Now granted, like I mentioned earlier, newer motors may not require the billet caps until much, much higher power levels. And a four bolt main block will take more abuse than a two bolt main block. So what might work for some might not work for the other one. And you're just gonna have to figure it out on your own. That being said, in my personal build, we're gonna be swinging to the fences. We're gonna try to pull out every single horsepower that we can out of this motor. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to spend the dough. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, signing out.